Hey everyone, welcome to this week's video update. Recording this the morning of Saturday, August 1st. Hope everybody had a fantastic week of trading. Uh, we're going to jump into the alerts, talk about our current positions, and update you on the day trading strategy. So let's jump in to the alerts, starting with Monday the 27th. First trade was opening a weekly double calendar in SPX. Uh, we didn't get one on uh, the week before just because of w where the volatility was. And so we put this on. This one had four days to expiration in the front week, seven in the back. And we ended up taking this one off on Friday, booking a hundred and some dollars, uh, 195, I think. So decent little trade. But, um, you know, what we're seeing is, and, and I know there's been some discussion in the community about this, but we're seeing, what we're seeing is on the day of expiration, uh, if this, if Toss will update here for me, but on the day of ex expiration, you know, so once this, you know, currently at six days to expiration, you can see when we put these on, we always like to have the front week that we're selling, the vol be higher the implied volatility is higher in the front week than the back. And that's how we're getting some of that favorable pricing and that good risk reward. Now, what we're, see, what we're seeing happening is in the last day, expiration day, those can sometimes flip, meaning that will go higher and that will be lower, meaning the back week is contracting quicker than the front week. And so, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of folks in the community saying, you know, I'm just going to start taking it off on Thursday or, you know, with one day to expiration instead of waiting till zero days to expiration. I think there's some validity to that. Um, you know, in, in the back testing and, and just in our experience, and we've had some monster winners when we took it off the day of expiration, you know, a few, uh, it was probably about a month ago now, but we had one that was like over $1,300 winner per contract. Uh, and had we taken it off, one day to expiration, we may have only booked four or 500 and on the day we booked like 1300. So, you know, it, it, it just depends on what the options do. Right. But, but I think from a consistency standpoint over time, I, I think, I think there is some validity in taking it off with one day to expiration. And I wouldn't necessarily take it off in the morning of the Thursday in the morning with one day to expiration, but maybe later in the day because I've been watching them and really seeing some expansion in your profits later in the day on that Thursday as well. But then as soon as you open up on Friday, that implied volatility differential has, has kind of flipped and it makes the break evens and the, and the max profits really kind of sink in on those calendars. And, and so watching that closely and just, just be aware of it. I'm not, I'm not saying we, you know, we'll st we're still going to hold some till the day of expiration, depending on the situation. We're still going to take off some on Thursday with one day to expiration, but just some thoughts and some things to be aware of. So, you know, you've, so as an example with this one here, you know, here's, here's the current break evens and we know implied volatility is going to expand and contract these break evens throughout the life of the trade. The max profit can expand and contract because essentially we're selling a strangle in the front week and we're buying a strangle in the back week. And so it's the difference between the volatility between the front and the back that really makes the biggest difference. And so what I was kind of saying is on, on Friday, the day of expiration, uh, you know, what we've been seeing at least the last few weeks is we wake up and we get this vol contraction between the differential where it brings in the break evens pretty significantly and it, and it, and it brings the, the max profit down. So it's, it's, it's sinking our profit line. So we're not booking as much profit. Now we've still price has been staying within range. And so we've still just been booking profits week after week after week. And so that's been great, but obviously we want to maximize that profit. So just some thoughts to, to consider when you're determining to take this off. You know, we, I always talk about, you know, 90% of what we do is we want to be mechanical, but there's also a 10% subject, uh, subjectivity that comes into trading. Um, and so, you know, that's kind of that 10% taking it off the day of expiration, taking it off the day before, uh, overall back testing these strategies, taking it off the day of expiration over time actually performs better, but, uh, taking it off with one day at expiration also performs well. So anyway, just, uh, just a couple 
random thoughts on that to help you be aware when you're managing these things. Um, okay, so that's one uh, that we put on. That that's one we put on Friday, but um, the one that we took off, we ended up, uh, like I said, booking. Um, uh, I think 195 bucks on this one here. Next trade, opening adjusting trade in GC in gold. So gold, obviously precious metal, silver, gold have just been on a rampage to the upside and implied volatility has spiked. So we had an iron condor on. Price has breached the upper break even of that iron condor and an implied volatility has expanded. And so let's take a look at that one first. You can see price is out of range here. However, I meant, and I mentioned this in the in the community. If you look at the untested side, you know, typically at that point we would be taking off the untested side, but you can see there's still a decent amount of premium in these options. Now, if price continues higher, we'll go ahead and close that out and, and see if we can get a little bit of a reversal. Uh, but um, you know, that's that's why we're not making an adjustment yet by closing that that put vertical side because there's still a lot of premium premium in there due to the spike in implied volatility. So what we did do is we went ahead and added a new one in the same cycle. And you can see we're up about 120 bucks on that one since we since we put that one on. So just going to continue to manage these as mechanically as we do. Next trade, uh, opening trade in SPY. So we added an iron duck in SPY. I uh, did this one with 20 days to expiration. So we've got a few different ducks on. And so let's take a look here in SPY. We've got two, two of them in SPY. We've got this one here that I just, sh uh, actually this is not the alert I just showed you, but this is one that we already had on. Price is hanging out right here up in the beak. And so this one expires 813. So we still got a good chance of price getting back down to the duck head. So we're just gonna hold that for now. The alert that I just showed you, which was at 20, 20 days to expiration at the time we put it on. You can see price has run higher up the beak in this one as well, but still a decent chance it could get down to the down to the duck head. And so we're gonna go ahead and hold this and see what happens. Uh, you know, even when price runs up, and you know, even if you're at max on the beak profit, we've still got a lot of time left and still a decent chance. I like to hold that because that that even though the trade shows as as long delta. It actually, in reality, is giving you some, you know, a decent amount of downside protection because if price, you know, drops and now it's in the duck head, well, that's where we want it anyway, right? So, I don't mind holding those. Now, if price runs really higher, and you know, like I, like we talk about in the course, if we have less than a 10 or 15 percent chance of price getting back to that max profit area, we will just go ahead and book that beak and move on, free up that capital, and redeploy that capital. While we're here, let's also just took, take a look at one other SPY position we have, and that's this iron condor. I feel like we've had this thing on forever, but uh, price is hanging out up here in the upper end of the range. Now, with this one, um, unlike the gold iron condor, if we take a look at the put vertical, I mean, we're, we're basically maxed out on that. So I just, I'm just giving it over the weekend. You know, if we do get a downside move, we'll continue to hold it. But if it, if price stays right here or moves higher, we will close out that put vertical side, hold on to the call vertical side and see if we can't get a little bit of a retracement down. And then, uh, depending on where we're at with everything else, we may add another iron condor, uh, onto here, a new centered iron condor in the next cycle. So we will see on Monday. Next trade, closing trade in SPI. So we had another duck on and we went ahead and closed this. So this is one where price did run higher, had a very little chance of getting back down into the duck head. So we went ahead and closed that out early, booked beak profit on that one. Opening trade in Starbucks. Okay, so we did some post earnings long uh, post earnings trades on a few different stocks. Um, we're in the heat of earnings season, which is great. We're getting getting some more different opportunities. So in this one, this is a little bit different than what we taught in the course, right? We we taught if if price opens up above the expected move, the stock has a tendency to go sideways to higher. And so a lot of times we'll look at a short put or a short put vertical. I just, I didn't want to do a short naked put. And with Starbucks being a, you know, a 70, mid 70s uh, uh, priced stock, you're just not getting enough premium to do a vertical uh, because buying that Buying that uh, one for protection just really reduces the amount of premium you get. And so 
What I did here is I just bought a long call and we did it deep in the money to kind of minimize that theta decay. Now what happened with Starbucks is, let's go to the chart, it did not do what we hoped it, did, it would do. So SBUX. And so let's zoom in here a little bit. So here's here's the here's what the expected move was. Price opened up above it. It ran higher. Looked like it was going to be a nice trade, and then it just came down. And the next day, really dropped. Then it bounced, and I thought, well, we still may have a chance. And the next day, it just kind of petered out. So I, I still think that Starbucks uh, you know, will we'll next into next week will potentially continue higher. Uh, so we'll be watching that, but I didn't want to, I didn't want to roll this. I didn't want to, it was, you know, it was in this cycle here with, uh, you know, at this point, six days to expiration. So the theta decay will really start to kick in over the weekend and into early next week. So I didn't want to hold it over the weekend. So we went ahead and just closed it and took a loss on the trade. Um, you know, these, these, these trades have been so good over the years. I mean, just so high percentage winners, very few losers that I'm going to still continue to take these, but this one just did not work out. We had another one that didn't work out as well. I'll go over that one here in a second. Uh, and then uh, one of the other ones, AMD, the one that did work out, booked about a $650 winner on this one. Let's take a look at AMD. So we did the same thing on this. It's a low price stocks. I didn't want to do a short naked put. Um, and, um, and it's too, too, uh, too low price to do a vertical. So we just bought a deep in the money call. You can see price opened up. It came down. I think we got in like right here. We got in at a really good price and then price just shot up. We closed it out the next day up here, booked, uh, booked a nice quick $650 profit on that one. And then the other one was Shopify. And this one was the, this one was the painful one. So shop, let's take a look at shop. S H O P. So this one opened, it opened up well above the expected move. We let it come down a little bit, got in about right here. And then price just, you know, really came through again, it bounced. And, and here's what you will see a pretty, uh, a lot. In fact, I was considering adding here, uh, when it was down here because what, you know, a lot of times it'll come down, it'll bounce off that expected move and rock it higher. Well, this, and, and so that's what I was kind of hoping would happen here. Well, the next day it didn't, it came down and it came right down to here. And I was, I was actually very close to adding to it right here, but I didn't want to do it for the alerts portfolio. I didn't, you know, I just, I didn't want to add that amount of risk. It was already a pretty decent sized position. And so just did not do it. And, um, and, and it, what happened is it, it really rallied hard off that point. Uh, and, and I thought I was going to get a little bit of a continuation into Friday, but just didn't do it. Obviously the, uh, the market was pulling it down. And, and so we ended up closing that one out for a loss, but again, you know, I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep pounding these trades when we get the opportunities because these post earnings, uh, trades, when they open above the expected move, they're still super high probability. So don't let a couple of losers defer you from taking these trades. Um, you remember, it's it's over time. It's a large number of occurrences uh, that that is is what uh, determines you know if this is a good trade or bad trade. Don't take two trades, two out of three, and say, ah, oh, two out of three didn't work. I'm not doing that strategy anymore because these are very powerful, very very profitable trades. Uh, next trade, XBI short strangle. So we rolled our short strangle and it had been adjusted into a straddle, kept the strikes the same, rolled it out to the 105, just extended duration. So if we take a look at XBI, XBI down a couple percent on Friday, which is helpful, kind of getting us back into center. We're up about 185, 86 bucks since we've done that roll. Next trade, closing trade in AMD. So that's the one I just showed you. Booked about six, I think it was 650 bucks on that one. Uh, opening trade in Amazon. So we did a uh, an earnings iron duck in Amazon. And what happened with Amazon earnings? Well, they exploded. And so let's take a look at AMZN. So it opened uh, opened up big. In fact, it was above the expected move as well. Um, you know, with with the all of them that I had on, I did not put a another one on here, but. Uh, and then price moved lower, but we, we got out of our, uh, uh, Amazon duck booked beak profit, $210 on the beak. So nice profit there. 
Next trade, uh, opening trade in Facebook. So we added another post earnings short put vertical in Facebook. Facebook also had really good earnings. And so, uh, you know, it opened up right here. Price came down, got in right here. It's rallied up. So we're up a little bit on the trade and we'll hold this into next week. All we need is a, is a little bit of a move higher. We're looking to book about a 50% plus of max profit. Obviously, if we get a rip roar and rally, we'll book more than that. Uh, if we get up to about 50 percent or so of max profit we'll go ahead and book that and then next trade closing trade in spx so this this is that closing trade i mentioned uh that we did on friday in that weekly double calendar booked a small profit uh 100 plus dollars in that 150 maybe i can't remember exactly what it was uh and then we opened up a new one now um one one thing to consider is you know we again we don't uh we, we like we would prefer to open these up on days when implied volatility implied volatility is contracting. Now, uh, at the time we put this on, uh, implied when price was centered, implied volatility was actually up, but it's still the difference between the front and the back week that ma uh, that matters the most. So, uh, you know, the the front week we want to be higher than the back week, and so that was still the case. And so we went ahead and opened it up because we wanted to have one of these positions on now price moved higher. So the good thing is if price does move lower in the next week, that's going to do one of two things, or it's going to do a couple things. One, it's going to get us back to center and B, you know, it's going to uh, spike implied volatility, which could be a benefit for this position. So hopefully we get a little downside next week. Next trade, closing trade in shop. So that was that post earning short put vertical. That was the Starbucks close. Uh, Amazon, that was the, uh, we, we just let that one expire in the beak. So, so far up the beak that, uh, and toss doesn't charge any, um, assignment or exercise fees. So we went ahead and just let that one expire and that's a duplicate. So don't worry about that. we <laughs> got to get that removed. So that's it for the week on our trade alerts. Let's take a look at some of our other positions, uh, starting with ES. So we've got two different, uh, long put verticals in ES. That one's way out of range. It's got, um, how much time does it have? It's got 20 days to expiration, so we're going to hold it a little bit longer. Our other one's got 48 days to expiration, and it is, it's it's just inside range here. So just holding these for that short delta exposure. Speaking of short delta exposure, we're about one-to-one -one on our ratio. So our theta versus our short delta, we're about one-to-one -one on that ratio. Uh, gold, I mentioned. Natty Gas, we're getting ready to roll this one. We're up... Uh, we're up over $1,300 since we did our last roll. And so Natty Gas has been doing really well for us the last couple of cycles. We're at 25 days to expiration. So, you know, when we get down to 21, we'll definitely roll this. So so probably Monday. And the fact that we're over 25% of our max profit, you know, this is a this is a prime, uh, prime time to roll this. So we'll be doing that on Monday. Uh, same with ZB. Now, price is out of range, so our, our puts need to be rolled up as well. I uh, just wanted to give this over the weekend. It was at 21 days to expiration. Yeah, so today's Saturday. It's, it's at 20, so we're, we're under 21 days on this one now. So uh, just going to give it till Monday, and we're going to go ahead and roll that roll the puts up and roll that out to the next cycle. Apple smashed earnings uh, up over 10%, which is not – and the reason I didn't do anything in here – you know, it did it did open up above its expected move, and this would have been a really nice post earnings trade. And that's that's a lot of times what you see with these things. Now, in this case, we already had a position on an Apple, so I didn't want to add another one. We've got a short position, so I didn't want to add a long position in Apple. Uh, so that's why we didn't take this trade. But um, yeah, so we've got our our long put vertical. We're holding for short delta, so that's going against us. One thing to note on Apple, they just came out and announced. August 31st, they are going to be doing a four for one stock split. So if you only own any outright shares in Apple, uh, so for every one share that you you own, you're going to um, you're now going to own four shares, and the, the stock is going to be cut uh, by 25 percent, which I don't like. I like the big high price stocks, juicy premium like your Amazon, Teslas, Apple. You know, I, I like these big high price stocks, but that's uh, that's what they're doing. So it's going to go down to about a hundred and some dollar stock instead of a four hundred dollar stock. 
And so um, just look for that. That's going to happen August 31st. And so depending on what we have on from an options perspective, we'll be keeping you up to speed on on what how that's going to affect that and what we need to do, if anything. So stay tuned on that. Uh, DE, John Deere, we've got a, uh, a short call vertical in John Deere holding this for that short delta exposure. Price is a little bit out of range there. Need some downside. DIA, we've got two sets of short call verticals. This one is just inside range here. And then this one is a little bit out of range. Just looking for some downside to get back in there. I mentioned Facebook. That's our post earnings trade. IWM. So we've got a bunker here, and it's getting to the point now where the where the P and L line is going to start sagging into Death Valley. So we want to get out of this now. This expires ten seventeen, so we always want to be out of these by about sixty days expiration. We're less than that, but we're going to go ahead and close this out and then extend duration. So this one's in October. We're we'll go ahead and do one out in November with the uh, which currently has one hundred and eleven days. So we'll just close that one out and basically extend duration. Basically. We're not going to roll it technically. We're just going to close it out as a separate trade, open a new one in November. Uh, but that's the plan in IWM on the on the bunker. And then we've also got two sets of long put verticals. One is just, just outside the range. And this one is a little bit more outside the range. So just looking for some downside there. Same with QQQs. We've got a bunker here. And this one is also in uh, October. So... We won't do it on the same day, but we'll also be looking to close this one out and and put on a new one with further duration in, in the queues as well. We've also got a couple sets of short call verticals, priced just inside the range here and just inside the range here. So one is in August, one's in September, and so just looking for some downside there. One thing to note about bunkers too, and and I want to make sure you all are clear on this. Remember, this is this is for that that downside protection, right? For that for that short delta exposure, if the market does really start to get crazy to the downside. And um, you know, we've we've I mean, these have these have not performed from a standpoint of making you profits overall uh, over the last few months. And but here's why. I mean, I, I you know, I think this is kind of goes without saying, but oops. Kind of go. Why is that happening? Uh, I mean, we you know we benefited from these during this period here, but obviously when you have a a something like this go on, of course bunkers are not going to be profitable, right? But you don't know that this is going to happen ahead of time, and so you know we're going to still continue to keep bunkers on as a hedge. And keep in mind, we're still you know we're still booking profits on our iron ducks. We're still booking profits on our weekly double calendars. We've got short strangles and iron condors. So you've got to look at it holistically. And the fact that we're able to continue to be profitable, continue to book profits while still having this hedge on, while still being basically fully hedged to the downside, that's that's the key. And so don't get discouraged if you know you you keep having these bunkers that potentially got to close out. They're losers. You got to put another one on because that's what they're there for. And anytime you get a rip your face off rally, like we've seen here, of course, they're not going to be profitable, but, but you still got to have that downside protection to some extent. Now, the amount that you have, that's a personal preference. You know, we, we always talk about our ratio of theta versus our, our short Delta and, and what we're comfortable with. And we've really, we've actually done really well with that in this, in this rally. We haven't gotten overly short, um, you know, we've stayed about one to one on our short delta versus our theta, and that's that's kind of the ideal place we want to be. You know, we've talked about in the past having a a range of you know either between one to one and five to one on our short delta. Uh, you know, any more, I think I think five to one is just I think that's a little bit too short. Specifically, now that we've introduced the bunker trade too, you don't you know you've got some really good downside protection, but you don't have all the upside risk. Uh, as opposed to like like some of our verticals, you know, yeah, you've got some good short term downside protection, but you also have the similar amount of uh, risk to the upside if, if price continues higher. So uh, we'll just continue to manage as uh, still continue to manage using verticals, short call verticals, long put verticals, and bunkers. Uh, but um, you know, just, just kind of staying. We're just trying to stay kind of in that one to one to two to one range as opposed to getting all the way up to five to one. Now, if, if, if this thing continues to rip higher at some point, we will accelerate our short delta amounts 
uh, and, and, and get some more on. But for now I'm, I'm pretty comfortable kind of having that one to one, two to one range at this point. Rut. We've got an iron duck in the Russell 2000. You can see prices up here in the beak. This expires on eight, eight. So that'll be next week. Uh, still got a decent little chance it could get back to the duck head. So we won't take this off too early, but if price continues to run higher, uh, we will do so. SMH, we've got this adjusted strangle. You can see prices hanging out in the upper end of the range here. If we get a little bit of downside movement, that would be a real big benefit uh, to the to that position. Uh, SPX I mentioned, SPY I mentioned, XBI I mentioned. And lastly, XLK, a, uh, a long put vertical in XLK, also holding for that short delta exposure. So that's all the alerts. Those are all the positions. Let's take a look at our day trading results for the week. Uh, super excited to uh, get this out to you all. Remember, it's, it's coming up this Thursday. So if you have not already registered, make sure you do. Go to navigationtrading.com slash daytrading dash registration. Sign up, save your spot. Thursday, August 6th, 4 p.m. Central is where we're going to be sharing uh, our strategy called the Mighty 90. And this is where we're just trading for the first 90 minutes of the day after the market opens, and then you're done. You don't want to trade past that with this strategy. It's the best time to trade, and you don't have to be glued to your computer. So been very good, very profitable for us. Uh, this, is, this is all of our day trading positions for the week, a little over $1,100. Uh, I'll go through kind of the details here. And what I started doing this week is I started breaking out the strategy because I'm testing some strategies. Uh, which did not do very well at all this week. In fact, and so I broke it out with the Mighty 90, these test strategies, and then also some pairs trades. If I, I, uh, I did add up just the, uh, just the Mighty 90 strategies and just if, if I was just showing the performance of the Mighty 90, it would have been over 2200 bucks for the week. But I, but I just want to include everything just to just so you guys kind of know what I'm doing. I'm not, you know, if I'm showing you losses, I don't, I don't really care. This is not, this is not to show you how, how great I am or how, how awesome it, uh, you know, I'm not trying to just pump you up with performance. I'm, I'm really just trying to be transparent to kind of show you what I'm doing because this day trading thing is really, this is an evolution, right? This, I'm not, you know, this is not a, uh, you know, I'm definitely not uh 100% expert in day trading. You know, it's not something that I've, I've done for a long time. I mean, I used to do it back in the day and then I pretty much wrote it off for a while. And so just getting back into it. So I'm, this is really just more posting for you all's benefit to see what I'm doing. And then for our benefit, just to really track it and, and get it down to a science so that when we do um, start rolling out some of these new strategies, the Mighty 90 is golden, but uh, some of these new strategies, just trying to get our feet wet and, and test and and doing it with real money just because um, paper trading is great, but we also want to have that emotional connection to it, uh, good or bad. Uh, anyway, long story short, here's the results for Monday. So Monday overall, you know, down uh, a couple hundred bucks. But as you can see, the Mighty 90 did really well, as well as uh, had a nice uh, pairs trade in ES versus NQ. Uh, next day just did all mighty 90 it was a little, uh, didn't have time to do much else. And so nice, nice day there 421. And the other thing I'm doing is, you know, Amazon's a big stock, but you know, BA and Roku, I mean, these can be done in small accounts. So one, the other thing that I've been doing this week is really doing more trades in smaller symbols, because I know that's what you all, when you first start out for sure, are going to be wanting to use smaller symbols. You're not going to be doing anything in Amazon. It's just, it, it takes too much buying power, too much risk uh, for somebody starting out. So, uh, and then also, you know, trading in some of these micro futures. So these, this was not a pairs trade. This is actually the mighty 90 strategy on the futures, which can be done as well. Uh, same here, almighty nineties, Roku, little loser, 20 bucks. The rest were winners. Uh, all these could be done in a, in a smaller account as well. On this day, really, I kind of over traded, especially on the test. Let, let this one kind of go. Uh, but again, you know, the pairs trade worked out really well. All the mighty 90 trades, uh, were winners, a nice one in AMD. And that was, um, it was a mighty 90 trade, but I did have a bullish bias because of the, uh, you know, we had that post earnings 
trade. So that was the day after earnings in AMD. And so you can kind of take a look at that and have that kind of a bullish bias. And and then I was, so I, I really focused on getting on a mighty 90 uh, trade in AMD after earnings. And that worked out well. Uh, and this was Friday. Yeah. So we did a, I did a pairs trade in ESNQ. That was a loser. Then did a pairs trade in NQ versus the Russell. That was a nice winner. Did a, uh, a bond versus note pair. That was a nice winner. And then some mighty nineties, a uh, couple few losers in there. And Tesla was a nice winner overall seven thirty one twenty five. So for the week, like I said, a little over 1100 bucks total, and that includes all the testing. So uh, look forward to this. Uh, can't wait. We're going to have some fun on Thursday, 4 p.m. Central, presenting this class. Um, I've, I, we did do a, a, a beta of this class with a handful of our members who had been showing a lot of interest and, and uh, were kind of excited about it and, and have gotten to kind of know over the years. And so did a handful with a handful of, of members, and they've been... They've been testing it on their own, and it's been doing really well for them as well. So really excited to share it with everybody. Can't wait. Everybody have a great rest of your weekend. We'll talk to you next week.